Support for the 10 greatest Husky football teams of all time, provided by the generous contributions of Ann Gittinger, Bruce and Jeannie Nordstrom, W. Thomas and Dixie Porter, and the 101 Club. It is a tradition steeped in honor and pride. Timing pattern. Madison touchdown. For more than 100 years, in some shape or form, the University of Washington has played football. Moon, James, Emptman, McElhaney, they are but a few of the names synonymous with Husky football. Collectively, they've won a plethora of conference titles, Rose Bowls, and national championships. Which teams were the best? What seasons stand out as the greatest ever? Join us now as we conclude the countdown of the 10 greatest Husky football teams of all time. Here's a recap of the teams we've remembered so far, numbers 10 through four. They were tough players. It was a good old fashioned kicking. It was good, yeah. Drop play to Cookie Jackson, breaks it open, 20, 15, 10, Jackson to the five, Cookie Jackson, touchdown Washington! Here come the Huskies and they got him. Steve Effen, Travis Richardson. And that was really the big game that propelled them into the, into the Rose Bowl. It lit a fire. Yeah, it was great. Firing for the end zone. Ball up for Robbins. He got it! Touchdown, Washington! Do you believe that? I don't. And now, for the top three teams in Husky football history. In 1984, Washington quickly establishes itself as one of the best defensive units in the country. Led by linebacker Tim Meamber's three interceptions, the Huskies crush Northwestern in their season opener 26 to nothing. Then, before one of the largest crowds in college football history, more than 103,000, the Huskies battled the third-ranked Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor. In that Michigan game, there was an electricity. You know, there's something about those helmets and that Michigan uniform that everybody who loves college football is going to, uh, that's going to grab your attention. And certainly did on that day, and it was one of the great days in Husky history. Michigan's confidence is running high following its recent upset over number one Miami. But the Huskies' purple rain defense stuffs the Wolverines running game and forces three interceptions by Michigan's celebrated quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. Millen gonna pass for it. Blitz coming. He gets rid of it, throwing long. Patterson wide open. It's up. He's got it at the 30. Mark Patterson's going all the way. Touchdown, Washington. The Huskies walk away with an impressive 20-11 defeat of the highly touted Michigan Wolverines. When we went into Michigan Stadium and beat Michigan, and not only beat them, but beat them, beat them pretty darn good, beat them up, in fact, that was a big thrill, going into the big house and beating Michigan there. Yeah. Back home, the Huskies clash against a solid Houston Cougar team that will go on to be Southwest Conference champs. It's defense as usual, but the highlight of the game comes on the Huskies' first play on offense, when coach Don James, known for his conservative play, pulls a rabbit out of his hat. 
We had talked all week about running a double reverse pass. And it was just so contrary to the Don James nature that he would want to run, you know, uh, run a double reverse pass. And I walk up to Coach James because ultimately, of course, it's his decision. And I've never seen him smile before in a game, but that's the only time he had this big smile. He was like a kid, a kid on, on Christmas morning. He said, yeah, 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 run the, run, run the double reverse pass. He was, he, was, he was really excited to run this thing. So we go out there and, you know, I toss it to Jock Robertson and Jock Robinson tosses it to Danny Green and Danny Green wings the right back around and he laddles it to me and I throw it to Patterson and, and we complete the thing down the field, down to about the two yard line. The Huskies topple Houston 35 to seven. It's a sign of things to come. The Purple Rain will go on to win their next six games. Two step drop from Buckley over the middle, picked off Joe Kelly to the 35 30 on the run back to the 20. Joe Kelly going in to the five touchdown, Washington. The Dogs are now 9 0 and ranked number one in the country when they travel to Los Angeles to tangle with USC. But the Trojans have a tough defense of their own and surprise the Huskies 16 7. Washington bounces back in the Apple Cup with a 38 to 29 thrashing of Washington State. That leads to an invitation to the Orange Bowl to face the number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners. With quite possibly the national championship on the line. Led by their charismatic coach Barry Switzer and All-American linebacker Brian Bosworth, the Sooners come to Miami with a cocky, happy-go-lucky attitude that's quite evident in a pregame Orange Bowl festivity. Our rules were pretty tight, Coach James, you know, there wasn't any drinking. Here came the Oklahoma players with a drink in one hand, and then here came Coach Switzer with a, with a drink in both hands and a blonde on his arm. So it was kind of a two different philosophies, both very good, very successful, but uh, completely different philosophies. Oklahoma's hubris comes back to haunt them in the third quarter. With the score tied 14 to 14, the Sooners attempt a 22-yard field goal. And Tim Lasher lines up for a 22-yard field goal attempt. It's good, but the play is nullified by illegal procedure. Then, all hell breaks loose. And a flag is thrown on the Boomer Sooner schooner there for delay of game. And the Sooner schooner came out onto the field and actually tipped over. The Sooner schooner a scaled-down replica of a Conestoga wagon pulled by two white ponies. At home and previous bowl games, it is customary for Oklahoma to trot the schooner out to the 50-yard line after every score. But in this Orange Bowl, the wagon wheels get stuck in a patch of mud right in front of the Huskies bench. But the horse was kind of down too, and I was afraid we had two linebackers, Meamber and Krakowski, that went over there and I thought they were going to kick the horse and I didn't want them to get a penalty, so I had to go grab them and get them back. Well, anyway, they penalized Oklahoma and took points off the board and then they missed the next field goal. So it was, it was quite a, a game changer. The strange sequence of events pushed the ball back to the 24, where Lasher's 42-yard attempt is blocked by Tim Peoples. The Huskies eventually take advantage of the Sooner Schooner blunder. Quarterback Hugh Millen caps off a 74-yard drive with a 12-yard TD toss to Mark Patterson. And it's all oranges from there as the Huskies run away with a 28-17 stunner over Oklahoma. In a few fateful seconds, the game has turned around. But they had some really good players, but we kind of out-schemed them on offense, and we, uh, we played very well on defense. The Huskies finished the season ranked second in the nation with an 11-1 record. Years later, Coach Don James reflected on that 1984 season. We won the 85 Orange Bowl. We had great defense. Just, you know, it was, it was probably one of the top two defenses in my 18 years. For their stellar performance, the 1984 team is celebrated as the third greatest Husky football team of all time. This could be a Jorgensen touchdown! Touchdown for the Huskies! With their entire starting lineup returning from a team that went 10-1 and, and captured the Rose Bowl the previous year, the 1960 Huskies are brimming with self-confidence. Then came spring ball. And we came out there and we went out to practice. 
And the coaches had us out there running a few plays, stretch out a little bit, and said, you guys are so great, you can go on in. So we'd come in, and the second team would come in just all beat up. And they practiced hard. And that went on for 19 sessions. We'd go out there. They would say, God, you guys are the greatest. Don't worry about it. You're going to work these kids. So then came spring game. They put the first team against the second team, and we got our clock cleaned. We went out there as prima donnas. We played poorly, and we got beat. Simple as that. Here's Fleming. The starting lineup takes the wake-up call to heart. With some excellent blocking down to the five-yard line. And wins its first two games against College of Pacific and Idaho. Before the third game of the season against Navy, Husky quarterback Bob Schlaret receives an unexpected phone call from Sports Illustrated magazine. And it's a photographer. And, uh, he says, I'm going to come out and take a couple pictures. I'm from Sports Illustrated. I'm thinking about doing a cover on you. And I said, oh, <laughs> Sports Illustrated, okay. Schlorette makes the cover of Sports Illustrated, but the Huskies' fight against Navy goes awry. Led by soon-to-be crowned Heisman Trophy winner Joe Bellino, Navy upsets the third-ranked Huskies 15-14 to on a last-second field goal. That wasn't much fun. We had more rushing yards than they did, more passing yards. Well, you have two ways to look at the feet. You can go down or you can go up. And we just said, hey, this is in our MO. We're going to win ball games. And we went out and we did. Right up the middle. Thorat in there for a TD. The Huskies recover and take the rest of their games. But the victories come at a high price. Key players suffer injuries, including several linemen and quarterback Bob Schlorette who breaks his collarbone and is questionable for the rest of the season. But when the linemen went down, the replacements were fantastic. There wasn't that big drop off that you normally see between teams. The replacements are fantastic against Northwest rival Oregon. Down six to nothing with less than three minutes left in the game, Don Makita catches a short pass in the flat and appears to be going out of bounds. But Makita changes his mind and turns up field. That's the way the play was designed to catch the ball, go out of ground, stop the clock. But being Polish, sometimes you always don't follow the, the, the way the coaches want you to perform. So I just turned the corner and headed down the sidelines. And I remember passing Jim Owens on the sidelines. He was jumping up and down, shaking, go, go, go. This could be a Jorgensen touchdown. The Huskies finished the season with a last minute come from behind squeaker over Washington State to earn their second straight trip to the Rose Bowl. Last year, the Huskies dismantled the Wisconsin Badgers 44 to eight. This time, they will meet a more formidable foe, the number one ranked team in the country, Minnesota. Once again, the Huskies are underdogs to a Big Ten champ. It doesn't seem to matter. Washington draws first blood in the first quarter on a 44-yard field goal by George Fleming. In the second period, the Huskies take a commanding 10 to nothing lead on a short swing pass from a healthy Bob Schlorette, now back in the lineup, to Brent Wooten. Later in the quarter, the Huskies strike again on a quarterback sneak by Schlereth. Well, we got 17 points, and that took them out of their game plan because they realized they'd have to throw because their line could not handle our line. They could not run the football against us. They couldn't pass either. Golden Gophers quarterback Sandy Stevens completes only two of 10 passes for 21 yards and three interceptions. We were superior in a lot of ways, but they were superior in a lot of ways. We just happened to score more points. Stevens keeping laterals to Munsey. He could go all the way, the 10, the 5, and fights for the touchdown. Minnesota scores early in the second half and threatens to cut the Husky lead to three late in the game when Don Makita makes a sensational interception at the goal line. Intercepted by Makita at the goal line, the 5. Makita to the 10, and ooh, he's knocked down. Mike Landers that running that baby back 100 yards, but I made it back to the 20, and I thank God I didn't fumble. 
Uh, that's it. The gun has sounded. The football game is over. It's nothing but roses for the Huskies as they go on to unseat the number one team in the country, 17 to 7. Washington finishes the season 10 and 1 and wins the Helms Foundation Award for being the best team in the nation. When you evaluate our senior year, there had to be divine intervention. We overcame so many things. We overcame injuries. There was an aura about that team that I don't think very few people or very few teams ever experienced. It was just a special, special time. For their remarkable season and decisive defeat of Minnesota, the 1960 Dogs are honored as the second best Husky football team of all time. Without question, the greatest team in Washington's history is the squad from 1991. Winning wasn't the goal. The, you know, the goal was to dominate. With 14 returning starters, the James Gang has lofty goals. We were so close the year before to, to a championship, and we were not going to underestimate anybody. We were going to maximize every minute of every practice, and we were going to make sure that we got it done. But before the season opener against Stanford, the Huskies suffer a big blow. Starting quarterback Mark Brunel injures his knee during spring practice and appears to be out for the season. He is replaced by an inexperienced sophomore, Billy Joe Hobart. Billy Joe is what you call a gamer. If you came to practice and watched Billy Joe, you might think, oh my goodness, these guys are in trouble. But uh, Coach, uh, he, he told us that this, this is just next man up pretty much, and, and, and that's what it was. And the one thing about Billy was in the game time, when it came time to play in the games, he was ready to go. Hobart is ready to go for the most challenging road trip of the year. In the second game of the season, the Huskies travel to Lincoln, Nebraska to meet the Cornhuskers before a raucous crowd of more than 76,000. We knew if we could win that one, that that was going to be uh, the test. It doesn't go well for the Huskies in the first half. On Vallis, open side of the field, and pick it up. Trailing 21-9 in the third quarter, it looks like Washington's hope for an undefeated season is over. But the stifling Husky defense begins to wear down the Cornhuskers' offensive line. Meanwhile, the offense explodes with four unanswered touchdowns. The last one coming on a transfixing 81-yard scamper by tailback Jay Barry. Oh, he's gone. There isn't anybody around him if he can outrun one man, and it's touchdown Washington, and the door just slammed. After being behind by 12 points in a hostile environment, the James gang pulls off a stunning 36-21 comeback over a highly respected Nebraska team. As the Huskies leave the field, they're shocked by the warm reception they receive from Nebraska's fans. And they gave us a standing ovation and coach as we walked out of the uh, out of the stadium. They were clapping for us and shaking our hands, and nobody forgot that. That stuck in my mind and still sticks into my mind this day that they, you know, a, a, a team can, a fan base can do that to the, the opposing team and, and appreciate that our football team is that good. The James Gang continues its role with three impressive wins, including a 56-3 spanking of Kansas State and back-to-back -back shutouts of Arizona and Toledo. During those three games, the Huskies score a total of 158 points while allowing only one field goal. Every game we called a championship game that year. So uh, championship game number five, it might have been whoever we were playing that week. But it was it was our it was a championship game, Dustin. Next week it was a championship game, and it was um, we uh, that was our attitude the whole season long. And so, with guys like that and a staff that let us go get after it, it was going to be hard uh, not to win it all that year. And win it all they did. 
After a close call against the California Bears, the Huskies steamroll over the rest of their Pac-10 opponents and earn another trip to the Rose Bowl to face fourth-ranked Michigan. There are two reasons for doing this today. One is for the coaches and his team to thank you people for the great support. We appreciate it. We had just uh, cost ourselves a national championship the year before, so we were going there to, to get this thing. Oh, Husky. During pre-Rose Bowl scrimmages, Mario Bailey plays the role of Michigan's wide receiver Desmond Howard. Howard is the Wolverines most dangerous offensive weapon and the Heisman Trophy winner. And that's because coach made me Desmond Howard um, for the week in practice and, and, and everything I did, the guys were all over me. Just one of those things that you knew that Coach Don James would not disappoint in, in this. This was his time to make sure that we didn't cost ourselves. The strategy works. The Huskies hold Howard to just one catch, all game. After a scoreless first quarter, the Huskies take a 13-7 halftime lead. In the second half, it's no contest. The Huskies score the first of three unanswered touchdowns on a tightrope strike from Hobart to freshman tight end Mark Bruner. But the play that's emblematic of the entire season is an unforgettable 38-yard touchdown pass in the fourth quarter to Mario Bailey. My last catch as a Husky, uh, I did the Heisman pose, and, and I went to the sideline, and I'm laughing and stuff with my teammates. And all of a sudden, it was like the Red Sea parted. Everybody moved out the way, and I remember thinking, what is going on? Coach James came over to, to give me a hug and congratulate me. Best moment in my entire Husky life. And the best victory in Husky football history. Coach Don James' men rout the Wolverines 34 to 14 and fulfill the ultimate dream, an unblemished 12 and 0 season. The Huskies split the national championship with the Miami Hurricanes their first piece of the top prize since 1960. And for their undefeated season and outstanding Rose Bowl triumph, the 1991 Dogs are crowned the greatest Husky football team of all time. Complete for a touchdown, Walt Gansy, a miraculous catch. Joe Kelly going in to the five, touchdown Washington. There's the alley up down there. It is a tradition steeped in honor and pride. A tradition that began on fields of mud and sand. A pile on it in the end zone, let's see who's got it. A tradition that continues to thrive in a towering cathedral by the lake. Touchdown Washington! Do you believe that? I don't. A tradition that ignites and excites and manufactures some of the greatest players and teams in college football history. A tradition that will continue the battle cry.